blindfolded PC building, 60 second drawing challenges, and a pink dinosaur. Believe it or not, all these things occurred to me during my day in the life of a US soldier experience. I, I promise it'll all make sense, but let's start at the beginning. I traveled down to Texas to visit the Army Software Factory, which honestly I didn't know existed until I was invited to come out to see firsthand how the US Army builds software. Turns out this unassuming building behind me is exactly where that happens. So let's head on inside. Your first thought is probably, this doesn't feel like an army building. And that was exactly my same thought too. I was definitely expecting an intense drill sergeant and having to do a lot more push-ups. But instead, this looks and feels like a normal tech company. And that said, the army software factory's uniqueness definitely started to shine as soon as I started learning about the actual solutions that they're working on here. For example, one team is working on an ammunition blast radius application to allow the safer transportation of cargo, while another is reimagining how soldier-based mentoring can be supported by technology. And yet another is building a platform to better track the shipping and receiving of classified parts between units. All of these projects require not just a technical know-how to actually build the software solutions themselves, but also require some pretty specific insight into Army processes to fully understand the problem space and the end users. And this is where the Army Software Factory's secret ingredient becomes truly apparent. Every single software developer, UX designer, and product manager here all have unique backgrounds serving in the military. Rob here is an automotive maintenance tech turned software engineer. Tavia is a captain with nearly 12 years in the Army working as a product designer. Jeremy is a trained medic turned platform engineer, and Rochelle is a breach specialist turned product manager. This woman was literally breaching obstacles in South Korea before now working as a product manager, and everyone here has such intense backgrounds. And in fact, this concept is so ingrained in the DNA here that the Army Software Factory's motto is actually for soldiers by soldiers. And that's why this unit here is staffed by soldiers. Soldiers have the know-how, like we operate in these environments, so we know what we need, and yeah. it's really impactful that we can help develop solutions for this kind of stuff. So now that we know a little bit about the soldiers actually working on this software, how exactly are they building these ammo blast radius and soldier mentoring applications? It surprised me to learn that the Army is actively practicing user-centered design before ever writing a line of code. This means that prior to building anything at all, extensive research is done out in the field to ensure that the correct problem is actually being focused on. I uh, recently got the opportunity to head over to Europe. We ended up going up on ground and because of my like experience as a yeah. maintenance technician, was able to identify like, hey, there, there's oh, another really? problem here. Now, once a problem statement has been refined and validated through this type of research, it's time for the army to start coming up with potential solutions. And the more the merrier, because as they've told me, they like to fail fast here, which requires to have a lot of solutions to quickly test. And so to quickly come up with a lot of solutions, Rochelle and Tavia walked me through an accelerated version of their design sprint process. Starting with the prompt, in this case, create a breathing solution to help calm someone down, we set a timer for 60 seconds and sketched out as many solution ideas as we could. Now, these didn't have to be drawings of websites or full-blown solutions. They're really just meant at this point to embody a single idea or concept. And after the timer ran out, we took turns explaining our thoughts. A breathing exercise, I think of like deep breaths and like counting. So I have a clock here. We'll be moving like in for, I don't know, seven seconds, out for seven seconds, that kind of thing. Breathing exercises are cool. Having a sense of camaraderie when you're doing stuff is also really nice. So finding a way to bring people together in in real time to provide a, like a, a sense that you're not alone. That's great. That is great. <laughs> this really did put a lot of ideas on the table in a super short amount of time. And from here, we dot voted on our favorite concepts out of all of the sketches. So the dot voting gave us consensus on a solution direction. And now Tavia and the other designers here at the software factory have the task of turning these concept ideas into low fidelity prototypes. In this case, using the design tool Figma, which everyone seemed to love here. And just like that, we've gone from problem statement to tangible solution. But even still, we're not ready to code just yet. Instead, these low fidelity prototypes are put in front of real users to see what they think and to get feedback. And Tavia is actually headed out right after this conversation to meet up with other soldiers to perform some of this usability testing. And only then, after the wireframes pass this usability testing, does a product manager like Rochelle break up the designs into user stories to then pass over to the software engineers to start building. Like I said, I'm super impressed that the army is so diligent around these user-centered design practices because it really does allow them to be super confident that they're building the right thing for the right person before they spend all the time to actually code it. Another thing I find myself impressed with here is the attention to streamlining the actual software development process. As you can imagine, all the projects being worked on here are quite different in nature. But that said, the underlying tech stack that they all use is fairly consistent, and that's intentional. Even though the software factory is less than two years old, they've already built out a robust component library to allow for the efficient reuse of certain workflows between applications, as well as to make new features look and feel familiar to the end user. 
user. The Software Factory also has a dedicated team here in charge of optimizing how quickly each new project can get up and running. In sure. production, in the hands of users, sure. normally that would take from like a year to two years in the sort of legacy system. We take that on and we like make that abstract. So we've taken that one to two year period of source code to production and our latest timeline was two calendar weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. To drive this point home, Alex, a platform engineer here at the Software Factory, walked me through the process of manually deploying a brand new application using just the terminal. This was quite a bit of work and prone to a bunch of user errors. He then showed me how they're currently deploying tools using infrastructure as code, which automates the container building and deployment process that every project needs. Not only was this process so much quicker, it allows each project team to focus on their specific use cases without having to worry too much about the actual infrastructure that their apps are built on top of. Next, I sat down with the Blast Radius team, who took me through their process of writing automated test cases to ensure that quality code is being deployed. Because think about it, this application helps soldiers safely transport ammunition so that it doesn't explode and damage themselves or other civilians. And at a normal software engineering company, if you fail some test cases, that might mean your end user might spend an extra three or four seconds while checking out of their online shopping cart. But failing a test case for the Ammo Blast Radius project has some pretty serious implications, which explains why they're so diligent when it comes to automating these tests to further ensure that only quality code is being deployed. Now remember, everyone we've talked to here has a really unique army background, but not necessarily a technical design or development background. So how in the world did they become so competent at their technical roles? Well, it turns out another one of the army software factory's secret ingredients is quite literally investing into each and every soldier that comes here by offering a crash course with two tracks, one for design and product managers and one for software engineering. I loved the vibes of this classroom setting because even though these soldiers are put through an intense 14 week program to become full-time designers and coders, they also have an incredible support system from day one. In the beginning it was rough. Say so you're gonna end up in a pit at some point, just uh, lean out to each other and hold on and you'll get through it. During the 14 week crash course, the soldiers are given lectures by professors as well as industry leaders. And perhaps even more importantly, they put pen to paper as quickly as possible. Is this whole process also just one it's more week? It's been about a week, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're so quick. Yeah. <laughs> Every four weeks they're given a new prompt and asked to go through an accelerated process of research, solution ideation, prototyping, usability, testing, and lastly, delivering a final solution. And if that sounds chaotic, it's because it is. <laughs> I'm a big fan of chaos. I love to see specialists and captains and everybody in the same room and nobody's wearing their uniform. They're in bounce ideas off yeah. of one another. However, as a result of this chaos, these soldiers learn and improve quite rapidly. How do, how do you feel doing it the third time versus the first time? Much more comfortable. Yes. <laughs> much more comfortable. Yes. I'm learning like so much more about Figma and interactions and, and all that other stuff. What I'm doing now is far and away improved from that first project. And to keep things balanced with all of this intense work, the Software Factory has a dedicated Chief Happiness Officer who's in charge of everything from fun event planning to randomly handing out prize bags, which they were kind enough to let me pick from. You're family now. <gasps> oh, really? So, I hope I get one of those dinosaurs. <laughs> How happy are you right now? Oh, I got a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> My happiness level is through the roof. Yeah, it right? works. And to keep the fun times rolling, I decided it was time to issue a challenge of my own to these soldiers. And so I laid out my computer parts on a table and challenged anyone to build a PC completely blindfolded. <laughs> now, this isn't the place you're gonna find people shying away from a challenge. And so Jeremy, the trained medic turned platform engineer, and Joshua, a cyber ops specialist turned software engineer, quickly volunteered and got to work. <laughs> Let's see how it turns out. And if anything you saw in this video today looked interesting, then check out the link down below to see all the opportunities available to you with at Go Army. This experience has certainly opened my eyes to not only all of the design and development roles available in the Army, but also opened my eyes to the unique culture that's formed here at the Army Software Factory, which was super unexpected. And now back to Jeremy, who appears to have fully assembled the computer. But now the moment of truth. Does it turn on? As he flips the switch, we see that it spins to life. No way. Blindfolded PC challenge complete. Let's go. Nice.